Hello and welcome to the podcast. We should sleep more, you should sleep more, but here we are. Mm -hmm. We should sleep more being the title of the podcast. Yeah. You can probably tell that by the banner and the channel name and everything else. We we have very strong marketing right from the start. (laughs) Yeah. We're very proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. We just came up with the name after like a million years and just stuck with it pretty much yeah but i am your host lionheart apparent host chosen for it default host default host apparently (laughs) okay but i am lionheart you can call me lion or the whole thing if you want it's fine whatever and i am joined here with my co-host that's right sir sugar skull but we just call him Skull here just for making it Simplicity. easier. Simplicity. Yeah. Hey, everyone. How's it going? <laughs> and our third host. No. <laughs> um, optic- third musketeer. Third musketeer. Uh, optic Sergio, Sergio, whatever he wants to go by. We'll figure it out in post. Um, he's he's not here right now. We're just... We're, we're just going for it. This is a pilot. We're still figuring some stuff out. You know, so we'll, we'll tune it later. Yeah, we're just rolling with it. Yeah, pretty much. But we need, we need content. Yeah. Anyway, our topic for today. So our topic for today is going to be the struggles of working. You know, <laughs> yes. So, you know, when you start working at a young age, you know, there's these certain struggles that you got to deal with. Yeah. You know, bad bosses. Bad companies, bad. Him. You're at the very bottom of the totem pole where like everyone's above you. You're just like a fucking rookie there. Just bad working conditions. Bad working, unsafe working conditions. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's a lot. Yeah. So we're probably we're just gonna air that out and be spiteful for a little while. Yep. It's all you know? about spite right now. And in the comments, leave leave as much. Sp- Spiteful things as you towards want. your job towards not you, towards us to, to, not towards us but towards your current job or a past job that you've had just just be as spiteful as you want about it yes because we we want to hear what you know it will be sustenance for me <laughs> and also we're gonna try to decide for each other where is it a bad job or were we just bad employees and bad at our jobs yeah you know because that's always a fair question you should answer yourself true am i just bad at this am i just bad at this no it is the world that is wrong (laughs) i mean we'll go we'll go back and forth we'll go back and forth different jobs that we've had back and forth which is not that many not too many i mean because not all of them were bad but you know not all of them were bad we haven't had that many either we don't have a long career of years or whatever yeah but we, we've had a good number. And, you know, bad bosses are everywhere. Yeah, exactly. That, that one. There's no shortage of those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I guess I'll start off. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I was like 18, to, most likely like 18, 19, I got a job at a factory. My like dad got me the job. Great starter uh, job. Great, great starter job at a factory of all places. Honestly, I, I was like kind of happy about it because i just i needed a job at that point so um, we, we do be broke at that time yeah so got bills to pay got no money i i took whatever was on, whatever was on the table but i i ended up doing like janitor slash like i would i would just throw stuff in a compactor like cardboard boxes as i said you're basically the factory mule a factory mule yeah we would we would carry stuff from one factory to the other because it was like two separate ones Mm. um my supervisor i can't really call him my boss uh, technically my boss Mm -hmm. but super your co-worker that has to that has seniority over you pretty much yes um but he was he was kind of an asshole generally not, disliked you would uh, say not i wouldn't say kind of actually i would say he, he was he was an asshole just and i and i'm saying that because nobody in that factory liked him at all like anytime he would go talk to anybody like he was one of those really loud like 
up in your face kind of people and he thought like everybody loved him but in reality it was just his ego telling mm-hmm. him that mm-hmm. um, I'd see people rolling their eyes like crazy yeah a lot yeah. of managers have overinflated egos mm-hmm. like bro you're, you're a manager of a shitty ass job you ain't the fucking president you ain't the owner here he wasn't even a manager calm so. down <laughs> calm down but he was my probably su- brown nosing to the actual manager probably yes. he, w- he was my supervisor though because so. you were starting out and you were a kid yeah so they had to, they probably thought well we need someone to watch this kid i guess so he's here he you know he would always talk to me like he would never call me by my name he would always call me morro just call you kid basically just calling me a kid pretty mm-hmm. much yeah so but like in a kind of disrespectful way Mm -hmm. like it was pretty annoying that he would always call me that Mm -hmm. um but generally he he would always have something to say Mm -hmm. like i was just always a nitpick yeah always nitpicking everything i was doing Mm -hmm. it didn't matter what i was doing i could do so many things like the right way but there would just be one thing that he would always have a problem with. Right, right. Which was just annoying. Right. Overall. Never satisfied. Yeah, never satisfied. And I I would pretty much just have to like throw stuff in a compactor and like I said, moving stuff from one side to the other. Mule he, work. He, mule work. <laughs> and I remember one day we we would have like this big um, like trolley thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was pretty wide, like maybe like a good four feet wide and like maybe seven feet long, eight feet long. Like it was pretty tall too, like a good eight feet as well. Yeah. So we were able to stack things on the bottom and the top like shelf of it. Okay. And it would typically be like materials for the factory. Just like materials, I guess. Like it, it would get pretty heavy after like a bit. <clears throat> and I feel like he would always put in the minimal amount of work whenever it would come to that situation. Basically, he would leave it up to you. Yeah, like he would want to leave it up to me. And, and how, how old was this guy, would you say? I don't know, like in his 40s. Right, so not even old enough to be like, oh, my back. Yeah. Kid, you handle this. Like he was fine. Like I would see him carry some heavy ass stuff. Right. Yeah. He just kind of let this one on you. Yeah, he really let this one on me. And it was probably like the ninth or the tenth time us doing this. Because we wouldn't do it every day. Right. It it would be like every other day we would do this. So this many times in and I'm like, okay, well, we're doing this again. We're taking it over the other side. And as we're like pushing it, we have to go like a bit of a downhill going Mm -hmm. out of one factory. And then an uphill going to the other one and it was a pretty not steep slope but it was a long slope great design factory great design really really good for factory safety for Mm -hmm. employee safety fantastic you know OSHA certified (laughs) Uh (laughs) uh-huh oh this isn't the last time we're gonna mention OSHA in this Mm -hmm. podcast or in our lives (laughs) or in our lives apparently um but we're going up this this slope and He's in the front and he's holding it by like one side while I'm in the back using both my hands like almost Was he at least using both hands? Like no, he was just using one hand. One hand in this and thing. It felt like different. He was putting in like half the effort, like pulling right, it. Right. And we're going up this thing. It started tilting to one side. Mm-hmm. And he he just lets it go. Right. He lets it go. And I was like, fuck that. <laughs> I'm not Jump gonna, out of the way. I'm getting out of the way. Like, I'm not like that. It was heavy. Right. Um, so I just moved out of the way. It rolled down and everything just fell. It was such a pain in the ass to have to pick all that up again. But I was like, OSHA oh, note again. Uh, there should probably some be some kind of ties on that thing to tie it yeah. together or something like that. Yeah. But no, like, that shit fell over. He got he was so pissed at me like he was blaming me like as if I was the one who <laughs> let it go I'm I I was just I I just didn't even know what to say honestly right I, I was a what lot could more, you say what yeah, would you like, say what would you were I a say, kid basically really? like barely yeah. 18 yeah I'm like I I 
don't really talk much. Like even mm. nowadays, I don't really talk much. So right. talking back to a says the host of a podcast says the host of a po- okay before. Right, right, right. <laughs> I talk more now. Mm-hmm. It's just, Somewhat. You've always talked the same amount to me. I feel like uh, just close friends. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I've known uh, I've known Lion since we were both in high school. So you know we, we got a good dynamic yeah, going here. Like what? Like 11, 12 years now. Like that, yeah. It's been a long time. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So you know, putting it all together, it's kind of hard to even argue that you were the problem here or you were just bad at that job. Because one, yeah. it's a hard job. Uh-huh. Who wouldn't be bad at that? Mm-hmm. Starting off as an eighteen-year-old, those conditions unfriendly probably just incompetent supervising yep it's like no what blame could be put on you exactly he i'm just, sure he will put blame on you yeah he would and but he let's did. say but generally i doubt that you can do that yeah mm-hmm. he, he was just a really bad supervisor nobody liked him and one of the funny one of the funnier things is like after a month of me being there i just started avoiding him mm-hmm. as much as possible mm-hmm. like i was there at six in the morning monday through friday Wednesdays I was there at 5 in the morning having to sweep the factory outside and everything I didn't want to deal with any any anything at that point you should have been sleeping more I should have been sleeping more yeah that's gonna also be a recurring thing here <laughs> I should I should have been sleeping more I wish I was but yeah, I, know. I would avoid it I wish we were being and- the fact that nobody liked him there, mm-hmm. it was just so funny getting like little tips here and there. Like people would literally tell me like, oh yeah, he's been around this part like a few minutes ago and they would help me avoid him right. as I was there. You pretty much wrote that off the rest of the time you were working. I wrote that off for like another couple of weeks and then they ended up just switching me to the other side of the factory right. where I was just like packing up like blinds. Okay. So I just did not have to deal with him anymore. I didn't really even have to deal with an actual supervisor. And yeah, that was the rest of my time there for the end of the three months. And mm-hmm. I was done. Yeah, you're pretty much done with your summer job, yeah. basically, but it was. Yeah. All right. So, you know, I think that's a good start to this. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll go next. <laughs> okay. So my first bad job I got right out of college or right out of university whatever it was an insurance company in Orange County and it was it's not as bad as yours really because it was more of a desk job kind of thing yeah but the first red flag I got from it was my direct supervisor her describing the job and the conditions was very much like this is like a family we all help each other <laughs> you know we all care about what we're doing here with uh-huh. life it was life insurance that kind of insurance mm. if you've ever had to deal with a uh, life insurance salesman you you know who those people be very <laughs> persuasive but also to the point of being annoying mm. It was very like this is about it's about the grind lifestyle you know those kind of workplaces it's about the grind yeah it's uh, you know gotta gotta put in the work in very like if you put the work in you you'll succeed no matter what so keep keep working 24 7 put in 60 hour work uh, 60 hours a week God. 70 hours a week do <laughs> all seven days all of that oh, no. you know that kind of real real like try hard let's be honest that's what it was yeah. very try hard uh, system to work in yeah which uh i mean you know me it's not my thing really i mean i know that <laughs> yeah you feel free to explain <laughs> that. yeah it, it doesn't it didn't really work for me very well but and you know it i guess it were pe- there are people that that works for but it's just uh, for the sales people there that i saw it was just such a like um trying to push those people to make that their entire life Work-life balance is was so dead and they're so yeah, shot at that I point. Mean, you know how companies are most of most of the time. Right. They don't really care. No, that's true. Yeah, and they just want you to work to the bone. Exactly. <laughs> but the the sort of uh, predatory nature of that kind of like it's about commission and we're a family here and that kind of stuff and that kind of mentality that, that kind of grows. It's really kind of I feel like it just takes advantage of the people that are just trying to make an okay living so badly. Yeah, you know, and it's this kind of time like, well, if you work hard enough, you'll make money. And if you're not making money, if you're not making a living, that's because you're not working hard enough. Maybe it's because the system isn't good for this. Yeah, 
Maybe because it should be a better way to like get people than just cold calling or like just you know, processing a hundred pieces of paper and a hundred phone numbers a day and stuff like that. You know what I mean? They want that family commitment. Exactly. They want you to <laughs> act like you. And then, of course, that comes with everybody that's, you know, very, they're very friendly. It's very nice. I'm not saying anything against that. But it comes from a place of manipulation, to be honest. Yeah. And I, just, I just can't roll with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can roll with that. You know, I guess at this point, would you say that that's more my problem or that's like the company problem? I feel like that's like like a little bit your problem mm-hmm. because like, i mean I, you know I, me feel feel yeah, free to like, explain yeah, how like something's I, I my would, problem i i would i would feel that way too like mm-hmm. like i kind of just want to go there and do my job like sure if something's like entertaining or whatever like maybe they make it a little more lively mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's not really too big of an issue for me but like i know i know you and i know you're kind of just like you just want to get there you want to do your job and you just you just want to get your paycheck and, and then I leave. And then you leave. Like, fuck all this family <laughs> yeah. and everything in between. Yeah. No, I just... The, how manipulative is really just rubs me the wrong way. But yeah, exactly that. Like, th- it's more their issue because they really want you to work to the mm-hmm. bone. Mm-hmm. And just, like, intense. Like, no, no, you have to have this family mentality. And this you wanna is You want to be successful, I, you got to grind. Yeah, yeah. The only way to success is to grind. And uh-huh. If that's the way your company works... Just, I wouldn't suggest no. working there very much. No, it's 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 probably not gonna be good for you. The conditions are probably gonna be good, and they're probably not gonna have your back if you really need them. There's such thing as toxic positivity. Yes, yes, there is, and mm-hmm. that kind of workplace is full of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, oh no, it just it. So many salespeople I saw got burned out so badly. I I would feel the same. I I, I feel mm-hmm. bad for them. No, I feel really bad for them. And the thing with the sales is like, it's like ten percent or twenty percent of every ten people you talk to. No, it's like ten percent of everyone you talk to turns you down, and the people that don't turn you down. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong. Only ten percent of the people you try to talk to actually respond, mm-hmm. and out of those ten percent, only like three in every ten will actually lead to any kind of sale. I mean, three out of ten isn't that bad. But it's three out of ten out of in the one tenth of the people that talk to you. Oh, so that's like three hundred people you gotta talk to. Yeah. Basically, you know. Yeah, that's a the lot. The math is wrong, but you know what I mean. Yeah. And the thing is that not every sale is like, oh, I've made my paycheck for this week. It's like I gotta get multiple sales. Yeah, in order to, to actually to actually make a living. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to make a living. And they make it feel like it's your fault for not working enough. Mm-hmm. That's a pain. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my boss, I guess that's the thing. She, my boss, very much encouraged that kind of lifestyle, that kind of mentality. Yeah. But wasn't necessarily like an asshole. Wasn't like mean, wasn't anything like that. It's just she encouraged that kind of which, work environment. Which is It's still, much more underhanded. Yeah. It's still kind of a bad thing. It's it is a bad thing. I feel like not, not. I guess very directly like how mine was right. at the factory. Like she'd always have a smile. She'd always be like, "Oh, happy to see you. How are you doing?" And then yeah. how's your family? All that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. But it's always with the underlined of because of the other stuff. Yeah, like you, like you gotta be like, like this happy, and work hard mm-hmm. mentality. Mm-hmm. Get to know the other people here. Work with them to like boost the productivity as much as you can kind yeah. of thing That's, Oof. It's, a, it's like so much responsibility like mm-hmm. like almost being like oh like obviously like you have to do your job in order for things to move along and right, flow right. smoothly the job exists for a reason yeah probably. it exists for a reason but it's like there's there's really no point in going above and beyond when there isn't too much of an incentive mm-hmm. for it or even if there is an incentive when it's not even that good exactly there's not really any point to just shoot for no. it and you know some people really thrive in that kind of environment yeah there are the people that like they're all about that and mm-hmm. that motivation really helps them and you know good for those people yeah no no hate on them but not everyone is those people like you yeah exactly <laughs> i am not those people i am not a competitive person i am not a motivated person uh, yep, you are not. Nope. Uh, unlike me. 
Kinda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to know your own faults and be able to accept that. Honestly. You know? And you know, if if a place doesn't fit you really because you just don't fit it, it's fine too. Yeah, it's, it's fine. fine you can move on. I didn't move on. I got laid off because of the pandemic, but that's not the point. Yeah. I wasn't probably I wasn't gonna last there too much longer anyway. Yeah. You know, it's, in the long run. It's just even if you're there for, even if you're there for a day, like a lot of times jobs like. You get into a job and you don't even know, like, yeah, you know what it's gonna be, like if it's retail or whatever, like specifically what you're selling or whatever. But you don't know exactly how the actual environment mm -hmm. is gonna the be. The work culture, the yeah. management, mm -hmm. the employees. Yeah, because you the can the kind only... of customers you'll deal with. Yeah, you can only see so much. Right. Like honestly, you almost see nothing from like, most jobs. Yeah, before you even start. Mm -hmm but it's kind of funny because because they always kind of try to make themselves look like a perfect place yeah work. exactly like going off of like what what you were saying i guess i guess i'll i'll go on to another one of mine part two like part, part two second job second job for you. technically not second job but your second bad job my second bad job with bad um, management with bad management Th i mean a... technically not bad management like every everything was nice and flowing mm -hmm. so wh where i worked was th this was already me like i'm already like 22 at this point right 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 um well into young adulthood yeah like i had other jobs like before like that i was at for like quite a while but mm -hmm. then ended up just leaving for just other reasons right yeah just not a right fit whatever mm -hmm. but <clears throat> this job that i had it initially when i signed up to it it's because once again i needed money that's going to be a recurring pattern. <laughs> it's going to be a recurring pattern. Not that I'm... Re not, I feel most people can understand that most, one. Most people can understand that. but And especially the fact that, like, I, I just feel like I have this constant bad luck around me. And I, I like to save my money. Right. And I don't like to spend it like crazy. Right. But just, just because of situations mainly with like family or things like mm -hmm, that i mm -hmm. end up having to spend money because of somebody else right and cover somebody else's expenses and mm -hmm. that kind of just screws me over right yeah so i've kind of always been in a bit of a pit mm -hmm. because of that right right but besides that once again i needed money exactly and i kind of needed money somewhat fast and I ended up finding a job, you know, online, like Indeed or like ZipRecruiter or something. One of those places. Yeah, one of those. Not great places, just staying that out there, I mean, but it's, it's okay. I mean, it's fine. Like, yeah. I, I feel like I like ZipRecruiter better. Okay. Um, but found it there and it was like, oh, like earn up to like 500 a week or something like mm -hmm. that, which technically was true. Mm -hmm. Um but once again you don't really know exactly what you're getting into mm -hmm. when you're going into it and it it was a solely commission based job ah yeah so i i kind of took my chances on that one right i kind of made it worth it with the amount of money that i made okay i only i only worked at that job for a month All right that that month felt so long mhm mm and it, it was crazy it was real rough on you it i was, remember it that. was rough mm -hmm. um, so you were basically in the position that a lot of the sales people in my insurance company were in. yes very similar what i had to do was and i didn't even i didn't even realize this we had to go door to door like knocking on on people's doors i guess the 1960s <laughs> and you're selling them shoes yeah so we were we were doing like this like it, it was for like energy saving like mm -hmm. solar was one of the things we offered but we also had like other thing like ac hvac and whatever okay yeah like pool systems and everything and like it sounds really cool and like it, it probably is really beneficial for like a lot of people who qualify for it it's just I don't think door-to-door -door salesmanship is the best way to get that to people. Yeah, I honestly feel like there might be a better method, but I, it I guess... It probably is. It's just that one company is trying to profit off of it. I, I guess so. It's just... 
whatever they're whatever they're doing i guess they're doing the right thing because they i guess they normally started off like in arizona and mm. then they moved to california right and it, it's all like like government stuff like whatever government sponsored or yeah. like funded yeah pretty much so but private industry sold yeah or like structured yeah mm-hmm. so uh, like good good for people again who qualified for right. it but it was just such a pain in the ass to actually get things done right actually having to go up door to door which is something i never thought i would ever do in my no. life i i I mean, that's the thing I would think they won't don't do any more. Period. Yeah. I get a knock on my door. I'm like, oh, is this a Jehovah's Witness? Uh, let me pretend I'm not here. <laughs> exactly. Turn off the TVs. Turn off the lights. And I just, just I hate this. I hate this, this, this main character aura. <laughs> I seem to have <laughs> everywhere yeah, I this. go. Right. Right. And I'm like. I know there's so many people out there who just want to be the main character mm-hmm. at all times. Like mm-hmm. they just want to have this main character energy. <laughs> I don't want that. No. I'm tired of being the main character. I never wanted to be the main character. Mm-hmm. I I just want to be an NPC. To be fair, we're all the main characters of our lives. We are. Yes. But when I go to work, I just want to be an NPC. You want to be middle management. I want to be middle management. I don't want to have to worry about bullshit. I just, I just want to go there. Okay. Do my job. If I have conversations with people, that's fine. Entertaining date, sure, mm-hmm. whatever. But I don't want this main character okay. energy. L- let's explain that a little bit more okay, for yes, people yes, that yes, don't yes, know yes. this. Okay. So on, let me. I'll take the little oh, okay. bit to help you out. Uh-huh. So the a specific branch, let's say, of the business you were working on happened to be a very successful one. Is that correct? Yes. It ended up. Just, you unknowingly got put into that one. I unknowingly got put into the number one mm-hmm. highest selling and highest like rated and whatever right. of all of the offices mm-hmm. which there was only there's only like five in california okay so it's not that many but maybe a few in arizona yeah and then there's there's a lot more in arizona mm-hmm. but even then even off of the ones in arizona we were the number one out of all of them all right mm-hmm. which was just crazy to me I was like, there's... I mean, you you signed up for it in a in a nice neighborhood, in a, you know, populated state, uh, yeah, with ne- a good <clears throat> amount of funding towards that kind of thing. So yeah. it was it was good ground to do it. One would think it, it was, but like, but the expectations <sighs> formed from it. Yes, the expectations were just wild, mm-hmm. and I I like. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm so great at everything or whatever, Mm -hmm. like, but it wasn't that difficult. Like, I kind of just had to memorize, like, a script. It took me a few days to memorize it, and then after you just kind of, like, play around with Mm -hmm. it and, like, put your own, like, I guess, personality into it to make it more inviting for Mm -hmm. whoever you're Mm -hmm. talking to. You gotta gotta add some charisma into it. Yeah, and it... It wasn't that difficult to do, Mm -hmm. especially in the beginning. Um, I somehow, somehow, and again, putting a record on myself, the first ever employee (laughs) to ever make a sale on my first day. Nice, nice. I, I didn't even know about it. Like the, I spoke to a couple of people and the way it worked is I like whatever, obviously knock on their door, talk to them, kind of go through the script and see if they qualify. If they did qualify, I would have to pull out my phone and kind of sign them up for um, an appointment. Right. That appointment would just be for one of our like, I guess like technicians or I, for, I forget what they called them. To like come to their house and just have like a like a conversation like 30 give, minutes give them a second sales pitch kind of yeah so they would just talk to them about how much electricity they could save and how they would specifically do that mm-hmm. for their home and it was a no commitment kind of thing so mm-hmm. you know at, at that so point, there's no commitment for them to agree to have 
the interview with the other person. Yeah, so if they had that appointment, it was no commitment. You weren't signing up to actually accept any of this stuff. Right. Like once you were actually there in that appointment, by the end of it, they will ask you if you actually want to move so forward. So in theory, it shouldn't be too hard of an ask for you to get people to exactly. agree to that. In theory. In theory. Going back to kind of what I was saying about my last job, mm -hmm. even even if for any, and this is for anything sales related, only a fraction of the people you talk to will ever even listen to exactly. you. Exactly. Even out of the people that will listen, even a smaller fraction will go for it all the way. Yep. And even the ones that went for it, for you, for me, they wouldn't. They got me to agree to an appointment set up by you. Exactly. And smaller fraction actually went through with a sale. It, no, and even smaller actually even went through with the appointment. With the appointment, right. Because then that's a different day. They had time to think about it. Yeah. And if then, anything else came up in their lives, they were like, oh, cancel this and do my other thing. Yeah. And the shitty part was that, like, it was cool and all, like, saying, oh, if they... If you got an appointment, they pay you $100 per appointment. Right. Like that's that's a lot right. to be paid. But that's only if that person actually followed through with their right. appointment. And the thing is that there's a lot of like leeway there for them not to do it. Exactly. And then you get nothing basically. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. So even if I went through, I would have a designated neighborhood to go through. Right. A certain like 70, 80 houses, up to 100 houses to go knock on. Mm -hmm. And out of all of those, sometimes I wouldn't even get anybody right. at all. That so we were to walking up. around this neighborhood of a hundred houses back and forth, mm -hmm. knocking on their doors, cold calling basically. Yeah. People had no idea who you were, mm -hmm. no idea what was going on, no idea what this was about because there's no advertising on nope. this. It's 100% just cold calling. Other than it. just my uniform that Pretty I had. Pretty much. Yeah. They didn't advertise for your business at all. There was no way for these people to even know they were going to get this kind of deal. None of it. Nope. So it was just, it was just in and out you know try to do it within a couple of minutes save as much time as possible because we were out there for a good four or five hours a day every time you a did day it. monday through friday and that's not even including walking around oh well, yeah walking around but that's not even including the time we actually spent at the office beforehand preparation. beforehand preparation we would be at the office and again it was it Let me guess, whole... it was very like, this is a family, yes, this is a family. we gotta <laughs> grind, if you wanna be successful, you gotta yep. grind. Uh huh, probably your... even more intense mm -hmm. than... Your success is measured by your own hard work, so it's all on you. Mm -hmm. Every day we had to do so, uh, like chanting, we had to mm -hmm. do like table slamming and whatever, and pumping up for the day. Mm -hmm. And then after the whole hours of being out there, we would still come back to the office afterwards be there for like another hour to go over what we did for the day so much wasting time in all of that just trying to supposedly keep people motivated yeah like because it, they're not getting anything because this the way of cold calling sailing people selling people on something it's just yeah. so hard yeah so it would essentially be like almost an entire eight hour day Mm -hmm. where only four of the hours had you're, any chance of productivity you're actually doing something to mm. make money the rest of the time was just help hype building yeah the rest of the time was just hype building and reviewing on how you could be better and practicing to be mm -hmm. better on your speech and whatever um, right so doing all of that like again the amount of people even if i got like one two three people to actually sign up most of the time, by the time I actually got paid, I just made so little out of the mm -hmm. week that I would just be like, what happened? Right. I thought out of the whole week, I signed up like 10 people. The amount of work you put into it was not equal mm -hmm. to no. how much you actually got out of it. No matter how much they told you that it's about how much you grind, it just doesn't add up. It just the end. doesn't add up. And I... I was like, what? it adds up for the company. Yeah, that's even for the if company. they got one sale out of you, it's okay for them. Yeah, but I, I, they hyped me up so much. Like I wouldn't honestly fall for the hype, because mm -hmm. a lot of the times, like eventually after like a good amount of time, the the actual boss, mm -hmm. his 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 hype his speeches that he would give mm -hmm. very manipulative uh, very manipulative as all bosses speeches are yeah and very backhandy mm -hmm. 
mm. in a lot of senses. Right. And I really noticed that a lot while he was doing it. Like a lot of my coworkers would be like, oh, like he's so motivating. He's so this. And I would kind of be like, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not too sure. Like, yeah, kind of. But like at the same time, like I could kind of see what his two face here. Right. Yeah. And he, he would talk about me so much because I would bring in like a lot of numbers. Right. Sadly, a lot of them wouldn't even go through. That's the thing. But it's just that illusion of, oh, he set up all these appointments mm-hmm. in one day. Trying and... to motivate more people through, through you too. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, I'm not... I'm, I'm just trying to do what I'm trying to do. Like, I'm not doing anything too crazy. And I'm mm-hmm. honestly, I'm not even making that much. That's the thing. And I just got lucky that I even made a sale, mm-hmm. which I ended up learning about it like two, three weeks in. Right. And I was like, shit, like that. How much money would you say you got from that one sale? It was like 700 something. Right. Yeah. So like you think about that, like, oh, my first day I made $700. That's easy to say and be like, yeah, that's that's my, that must be great. If on your first day you made $700. Technically like 800. Technically like 800. Yeah. But then you add in how, like, how much you had to work the whole two weeks before you knew that. Yep. How much difficulty is, how like little the odds are. And it's just, you know. Yeah. That must burn. That burned you out so bad, I remember. It really, really burned me out. By the end of that month, by the end of that month, and they even promised, like, oh, like a bonus, whatever, uh, from like doing a certain amount of appointments and getting a certain amount, like after a month. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even get that. No. Because fine print contracts. Yeah, fine print contracts because I ended up quitting before my next like paycheck which was an another two weeks of working Mm -hmm. which at that point the bonus wouldn't have even been that worth it no because then that would have been a whole like six weeks of working yeah and if you really like calculated by how much you were getting per hour probably like five dollars an hour would you say no i i i guess so because at the end of the day i only adding the bonus or without the bonus well adding the bonus would have made it more worth it but okay at the end at the end of the day it was hardly worth it okay it was just barely enough okay and for all the like the struggle that the emotional the high (laughs) building all of that like really puts you through is that really worth it not really no No, it was not worth it Mm -hmm. at all like people at that place there, there was only a handful of people, like a good six, seven people mm-hmm. who were there that were there from the moment I started. Like right. they were there before or they started a week after I did right. and they continued the whole way through. Mm-hmm. But there was so many other people that were just there and gone in an instant. Pretty high turnover. Yeah. Right. Okay. And that was just, yeah. By the end of it, they they were like trying to kick me out Mm because I was trying to ask for like my money that I needed to be paid because even my final paycheck they held on to it for so long oh right right. yeah I waited a whole like almost two weeks before I even got it like it was such a pain in the ass and me trying to talk to them it's like they were getting annoyed mm-hmm. like because like you want to get paid <laughs> yeah like i'm you're annoyed. more concerned with that than they grinding more and exactly. making more numbers and stuff yeah no so like putting at the end of the day i just based on what they were saying the way they were hyping you it's hard to say that you were the problem there yeah in right. any way like even if the management wasn't that bad except for maybe being somewhat underhanded in the way they presented things which is pretty bad to be honest especially for like the type of people you try to drag into that trying to like mm-hmm. give people this false false idea of what it's like yeah all that kind of stuff but also just the whole system in itself it's pretty predatory to the general person yeah so yeah we, we can just say that's just a bad job that's just a bad that, job that ain't their fault yeah i'm not the problem you're the problem um, yeah they're the problem okay so i'm, I'm glad then this is one we can absolutely settle on not even yeah. a question on it exactly oh man so going whatever your next job was all right so my next job uh similar to my last job office-based job the big issues with it weren't necessarily what i had to do on my workload it was just how badly run and managed this place was Mm. just incompetently 
lazily, just full of nepotism, blatant <laughs> favoritism, just all around, like coming apart of the scenes and you can tell and every once in a while they just duct tape the place back together and they keep going that way. I love this, this downhill that we're having of, of like, of like our jobs. Like it's like they didn't get any better. Which is weird because it kind of, they did for me at least. Well, well, like the way we're saying it, like, like how you're explaining this one, like it just sounds like we're, we were just going down it. <laughs> Not us, but like just the jobs we were in. Yeah, you know what? It was a tough time. But this was actually 2021. Yeah. Recently, but still post pandemic leading into the supply chain shortages and issues so yeah. all of that kind of mattered in this situation okay okay so i'm not gonna get too much detail in this place it was a makeup company mm. and i worked in one of the warehouses of the makeup company as a person that processed orders uh set up shipments that kind of supply chain kind of work basically yeah and um you know, I got hired on there, like uh, still pretty, still pretty fresh feeling, you know, still like kind of early in like my career and stuff like that, you know, really. And the thing is that they had there, they had all these different companies that they sold to stuff like that, all these different uh, channels they had to work with, all these different forms they had to fill. It's like real complicated shipping things all around places. Yeah. And the amount of people that actually knew how any of that worked, very low. <laughs> the amount of people that actually knew how everything in that warehouse worked, almost it was one guy. Uh huh. Everybody kind of just knew their own thing and kind of just focused on, well, I'll get my part done, pass it on to someone else. Hopefully that person will do their part, but yeah. I don't know, maybe not. The manager, very focused on like the company image, making numbers, all that kind of stuff. Not very focused on the actual workers, how they're doing mm -hmm. and you do this. And just like very willing to cut the workers off at any second if mm. they needed to. Yeah. Cutting, we're gonna cut your hours. We're gonna let you go. Safety care. standards very low, which is like okay, it's a makeup company, yeah. we're, but we're still shipping boxes and crates and yeah. pallets full of heavy things that'll tip over. Yeah. And the safety standards are somewhat low, and for some reason that I can only attribute to them being bad at dealing with their workers. Mm -hmm. It was very hard for them to find people to work there. Was that because they cut your hours at any time and you're not really making good money? Probably. Probably, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So anyway, so I was working at like an office job there, you know, very simply. And I'm not going to say I, uh, I'm not going to say I gave my all to this job because, you know, when you go into a place and you tell, oh, the managers don't know what they're doing. The workers are kind of annoyed here and they're just here for a paycheck. Yeah. There's no upward mobility here because all of the people in like higher jobs are either related to the managers, family, friends of the managers, live in the same community as the managers, which I did not. Yeah. You kind of get the idea like, oh, there's no... This is place is just gonna be a line item on my resume. Yeah. There's no future for me here. No <laughs> career for me here. Yeah. So I'm not gonna say that I busted my ass on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like that's fair. I did the bare minimum. I mean, you did what it's you doing had the, to do. Is doing the bare minimum not enough? I I think it's enough. I feel like it should be. Yeah. I didn't slack off. There were nothing got anywhere late, and no one lost money because of me. Un unless for the times that I just made a honest mistake, yeah. you know, learning things, I made mistakes. I'll admit that, yeah. but n I did not. But it wasn't because of my laziness that anyone lost money or anyone had a harder job. I yeah. just, I the bare minimum was me not doing that. Yeah, did my job and made sure other people could do theirs, except for one time. Uh huh. So the only time where I'll give it to them that it was all on me was I was somewhat distracted on a Friday. I wanted to leave. I had stuff to do with some friends. <laughs> Me and some other friends of ours, yes. Uh -huh. So, and you know, when a part of this, like, you know, shipping things out and stuff is that the numbers that you put on forms has to be very precise. If they're off by a little bit, there's people going to be like running around the factory looking like, where's the thing that we lost? Yeah. Because there's one missing because of this form was written down wrong. So one time we had to ship this order of 14 pallets stocked like six feet high of boxes of makeup products. And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. I'll just fill this out real quick before I leave. This was like 
20 minutes, 10 minutes before I had to go. And I had no patience of being there overtime that day. You just ran through it. Yes. Like... I was just like, build this out real quick. Put it out there. And I'm done. And I left. You know, left. That was on a Friday. I think it was a long weekend too. Or it wasn't there Monday for some reason. Mm-hmm. Chill day. Had a, had a good weekend. Had a good time. Came back the next Tuesday. People were in chaos there. <laughs> there was running around. There was... One of the management, an assistant management, I believe he was, mm-hmm. running around because I wasn't there on Monday. He had to do some of my job. He was just like, hey, this big order, we got to deal with this stuff, 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 blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wow, what, what happened? Did that come in on Monday when I wasn't here or something? I looked over it. It was that order I did, I filled out on Friday for 14 pallets. I wrote 64 pallets chaos off of one person <laughs> listen should there not be someone to double check that should the manager have not stepped out of his office and looked at so where's the 64 pallets no we only have 14 what happened there um, i mean te- technically yeah but i will admit that's all on me it's yeah. my fault <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely your fault that's definitely on me <laughs> but again he had a whole day while i wasn't there and he hadn't figured it out by Tuesday yet. Yeah. So what I did at that point was like, oh, this is a problem. And I just, you know, very naturally slipped into that on Tuesday being like, oh, I'll, I'll take I'll take care of everything for me for my job. And he very happily just dumped it back on me. Like, I, I ain't got this ain't my problem. You nice. do it. Lower level employee. That was very much the vibe. Like, you do it. Lower level employee. This ain't my job. Yeah. I realized the problem. Apparently, I was the first one to realize what happened. Mm-hmm. Yes, because it was my fault, but also because I, you know, I stepped out into the warehouse and looked like, mm, oh, that's what happened. Yeah. Take a look. Take a cursory look around. <laughs> that somebody else didn't bother to do. No one else bothered to do. And there's people working in Outbound that know exactly how much they have. No one asked those people either. Apparently. They just they just saw the number and they were like that that's it right there. Exactly. No one deemed to talk to any of the lower level employees about anything or look at the warehouse. They just stayed in their cozy air conditioned office. My office wasn't air conditioning. It was actually part of the whole warehouse, just like a corner of it. <laughs> Not air conditioned at all. Of they course. stayed in their cushy air conditioned office with their nice lights and their nice big windows into the outside looking over a park. We had no windows where I was. Yeah. And they did not put any effort into it. So I don't feel bad about what happened. Because I didn't, the only people I inconvenienced was those guys. Anyway, so realizing, me being the first person to realize this, and I'm not proud of this, but I'll admit it. My first thing was like, oh, didn't we just get a new temp agent? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it was her fault. (laughs) Listen. (laughs) So what happened was. But what I did was, number one, fix the problem. Call call the shipping company. Be like, oh, hey, there was a mistake. We don't actually need three trucks. We just need one, and we're just going to fill half of it. And they were, like, very happily being like, oh, okay, that's way easier for us. I talked to the warehouse guys. I'm like, oh, hey, guys, I know, I know our management said that we had an issue, but actually don't worry about it. It was a mistake. It's cool. I got, I got it. Anyway, and then I was like, okay, now mm-hmm. to explain what happened to the managers, because they're expecting there to be a big order. But there's not. I was like, listen, I think the new temp agent made a small mistake here. She did, She wrote this number wrong. I think she meant to write 14, not 64. I've already done all the things to fix and everything. I'll talk to her. She wasn't there that day. That was another reason why yeah. I could do this. I'll talk to her. I'll handle it somewhere. But don't worry. I've already got everything in order. I took care of it. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, dang. and basically the reaction is, I can't believe her, blah, blah, blah. She's not ready for this yet, blah, blah. I'm going to need you to like supervise for a while. I understand. I'll take care of it. Don't worry. You were a hero. <laughs> oh, my God. You were a hero for the mistake you caused. It was a mistake I made. I didn't. Cause made. Yeah. Same thing. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Listen, the thing is, I think that this illustrates how there were several layers of how People, men, management, accounting, any of those levels could have at any point figured it out. They had a whole day I wasn't there yeah. to figure it out. Some of them were there on the weekend. So they had the weekend and that whole day to figure out. Mm-hmm. And none of them bothered because everyone just cared about doing their own job. And like other people, they better do their job. Yeah. 
So, what, what would you say it's been worth? Am I a bad employee or was that place not great? I, I don't. I would say you're not in a bad employee. Like that. That was the only time something like that happened. Yeah. See, this this is no bias of like, oh, you're my friend, whatever. But like, like. Oh no! no trust I'm me. Not. He'll he'll tell me if I'm a bad yeah. person. Anything. <laughs> and I have. Yes. Um, but like in this situation, it's like, well, obviously you made a big mistake, which was solved fairly easy. Oh yeah, it took me like yeah. 15 minutes to fix it. Like like luckily. Yeah. But but like just just cuz uh, like everyone makes mistakes. Like e even if it's like s something crazy like that like True. because at the end of the day it just comes down to I wrote the wrong number on a paper. Yeah, it, it's not that you're like purposely just like no. messing with <laughs> whatever you were doing like you, oh, you I were could cause so much chaos I purposely. Yeah, like you were there to do your job you did your job you you did what you had to do so obviously it's management's fault for not double checking anything anything at all because they could have easily seen it but they just didn't the people at the warehouse could have spoken up yeah and said like what are you talking about big orders we don't have that many here mm -hmm. but they didn't but they didn't yeah so obviously there's there's a problem with the chain there. Yes. Not... There's a lack of double checking. Exactly. Yes. And you know, to that one temp agent, Karen, I'm sorry. I'm pretty <laughs> sure you didn't even find out that this happened. <laughs> but I am sorry, okay? If you're ever wondering why our manager didn't like you from the very beginning, I think it was because of this. Just having a confession here. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever listen to this, Karen, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know you didn't like that job anyway. It was good working with you after that. I, I was, well, if I was much more friendly to you one day all of a sudden, it was also because of that. It was awesome. But you were cool. Like, we got along pretty good until you <laughs> left that place. Like I said, they were cutting people's hours. That's that's why a lot of people left at their point. But you know, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, it's good to get that off my chest. <laughs> well, there it is. Just 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 for her, if she, if she ever sees this. Anyway, so that's skull therapy hour finished getting that off my chest. Mm -hmm. Now we're moving to lion therapy hour. Lion therapy hour. Because yes. this next one. Um, so this is the job that I'm currently working at. That's right. Uh, I work at a shoe store in a mall. I'm not going to say the name of the store. You can go ahead and... The Imagine. one you hate the most is that one. The one you hate the, the most. The one that ripped you off that one time is that one. Sure. <laughs> but this this place that I work at is honestly the worst job I feel like I've ever had out of all of them. Now, do you say that on the management level? I say that the on... Company the company level? The co-worker level? I say that on every level except for the coworkers. Okay. My coworkers, uh, my coworkers are great. They're they're fine. They do whatever they do, and I I like talking to them, and everything's fine. If you're listening to this at his job, you're cool. You're not the problem. Yeah, you're not the problem. And you know you're not the problem. Yeah, you know you're not the problem, and I'm pretty sure you know exactly who the problem is. Mm -hmm. It's not just one person, it's at least two people that I have a problem with now. Right. But the main problem is the manager. Right. Absolute. Your direct manager. Manager mm -hmm. of that whole store. Yep. Absolute worst manager I've ever had. Right. So let's give them a little bit more specifics. You work in the back, right? Yes. I... In the back. You, don't, you don't do retail uh, sales. You work mm. in the back of this retail shop. Yep. Mm -hmm. I work in the back. I, I, am, I am the unofficial stock lead mm -hmm. which that's just some shit on its own because when For i one how are you a lead if you're the only one exactly i'm i'm literally the only one in the back that's responsible for the entire stock room stock master a stock master apparently um they tell me every time your stock room gotta keep it in order everything your responsibility my responsibility without actually being paid for the responsibility or having authority or i have some what authority mainly over 
my other co-workers that are there in the back because mm-hmm. I can just tell them whatever like I'm not an asshole if I see somebody doing something that they shouldn't be doing like putting something upside down backwards or whatever or they're like knocking stuff over I'm cool with them I go up to them and I I just tell them like oh hey like like uh, can you be like a little more careful like right. just yeah. We don't want to get people yelled. understand if you just tell them things usually. Yeah, uh, I'm just like, oh, like, oh, just make sure you don't like put it this way or whatever. Right. Um, like, don't want to get mm-hmm. yelled at, mm-hmm. which is which is a thing because my manager likes to yell at us. Ah, yes, managers that yell at you. The best way to deal with your employees. Mm-hmm. Verbal abuse. Yeah, I've I've gotten yelled at like quite a few times. Mm-hmm which sometimes hilariously yeah for for the dumbest reasons at times like if not for me that stock room would be chaos and it is chaos because you're the only real stock person there's people that go back there and put things back Mm -hmm. but you manage and you actually organize everything exactly especially the new things that come in yep exactly I do, I do get some help from the assistant manager whenever it's like shipping days, mm-hmm. which I currently do not do anymore. Because we'll get to that part. We'll get to that part at the end. I feel I'm, like. Well, I, I'm going to just add this in right now sure. because I was injured at work weeks ago. It, it's been almost a month already mm-hmm. and I'm still recovering. Mm-hmm. My hours were cut because of me being injured. Which is illegal. Which is illegal. But they want to... And this is this is also me saying the company is horrible itself. Mm-hmm. Because how they treat their, custom, their clients. How they treat their clients, their, their employees, whatever. I'm trying to talk to them and say, you know, why are my hours being cut? Or why, you know, I'm trying to get my workers comp mm-hmm. to make up for the hours that I'm losing. Because I would be working within, or I, I would have like 25 to 30 hours a week. Right. And it got cut to only eight hours a week mm-hmm. because of my injury. Right. Because you can't do the same kind of lifting, moving kind of stuff as before. Exactly. And, you know, talking with like HR and everything like that, the whole workers comp thing, mm-hmm. they only wanted to cover two out of the three days that i missed when i was injured right i don't even know if they're covered or even if they covered the third day at all Mm -hmm. um and they don't want to cover the hours that i'm missing at work because those have nothing to do with you being injured that's just clearly because they were gonna cut you anyway Mm -hmm. apparently even though I've been working there for almost five months now. Five months where the flow of shoes has not stopped at all. Mm-hmm. Which, once again, being stuck with this main character mm-hmm. bullshit yet again. Your store just so happens to be... The number one in the nation. For this company. For this company. So, you know, check out what the number one stores are for all your most hated shoe stores <laughs> and give them a negative review on anything. I I absolutely hate that. Like when mm-hmm. when they they told me this on my second week right. of being there, like on my first week, I went from being a sales associate to being the stock lead because they decided to put me in the back one day. They thought I did a good job and they decided, well, we don't have a proper stock lead. So because this guy, this he's here. This is the guy. And he's a guy like he's tall and strong and he can handle this tall and strong. (laughs) Yeah, most definitely. Um, (laughs) I just feel because of the jobs you've already described yourself as doing not mm. yeah i'm not anyway let's get into some of the details of your manager yeah you know the person you directly deal with the person that's supposed to facilitate your work there yeah so he is just fantastic mm-hmm. absolutely very motivational from what you've told me very motivational to you know sometimes some of you will might just think like well i guess i'll have to walk somewhere but he motivates you what does mm-hmm. he tell you mm-hmm he 
just by the way, the stock room itself, it's just unsafe. Oh, we'll, we'll get we can get to that after the oh, match. Well, part. yeah, but like this just makes it funnier. Sure. Okay, let's do the yeah. unsafeness. Let's yeah. do the parts where we'll send directly to OSHA. <laughs> Yeah. The clips that go directly to OSHA. <laughs> I told you OSHA would come back. <laughs> it's it's just unsafe back there. Like our main hallway in the back stock room is With just... these like large shelves full of shoes that yeah. probably end up weighing a ton because you have them. Well, what? Like 500 shoes per shelf or something like that? It's like 700 like pairs. 700 pairs. Okay. Yeah. Per side. Per side of the shelf. So it's about 1,400 the math doesn't matter. It's a lot of shoes. It's very bad to like you need to have those very safely done. Yeah, but it's not and the floors tile tile floors tile floors for you to just like walk around carrying very large boxes. Yeah, heavy boxes heavy boxes multiple sometimes covering your vision mm -hmm. tile floors tile floors do They put a carpet down there to help with that. Nope. Mm -hmm. They do not and then the, our main hallway just completely broken just mm -hmm. just literal chunks missing out of the ground like your average la street basically y yeah potholes mm -hmm. cracks you it's, know everyone's mom is getting a broken back here it's awful yep. why anybody even puts up with it i don't even know I mean, you'll have to answer that question for me, my friend. I guess so, because apparently so. I'm now, still there. Now, let's see. So, very unsafe, but it's not like anyone's gotten injured there for it because of it, have they? Yes. Man. Yeah, yeah well, very sarcastic, yeah. Have we, as we've mentioned, you've gotten injured there because of it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, the conditions that we have there, which, by the way, also when I first started, I didn't even get any breaks. No. At all. At regular, you should get like at least two breaks at yeah. your lunch. Yeah, because I, I, two days out of the week, because that's what, I, I don't even think I went into the whole main, well, yeah, I did say the whole main character thing, but not only it being the number one store, but because of it being the number one store, they doubled our workload. Mm -hmm. The company itself just said, you guys are selling so much more like second place is is not even a competition to us mm -hmm. it, there's such a gap between us and them it, it's kind of like ridiculous right so yeah they doubled our workload instead of getting one shipment a week we started receiving two shipments a week of shoes of shoes mm -hmm. and we went from getting only two pallets which a pallet on its own would have maybe stock three six feet high probably about six feet high all pallets have stock that high yeah um i wouldn't know how to say how many boxes maybe like like 30 boxes 40 I say like 40 boxes. You, know, you guys know what a shoe what a shoe box is like just stack it six feet high that's how many well i mean like times not just, it's not just the individual shoe box yeah, it's yeah. like 12 12 pairs of shoes per box right and it's not just shoes we receive we also have clothing right you, you've been to shoes yeah. so you know what so it's like it, it's just stacked up like crazy mm -hmm. and you're expected to sell all that because this is like the best market you guys basically. yeah so instead of two pallets and receiving you know maybe like 40 boxes mm -hmm. off of those two pallets we started getting four five pallets at a time twice a week that's just an insane amount right that we were receiving right and gladly you have a team of stock people that are at least you know, be able yeah. to coordinate that and set that up and reach very high with all those very tall people, right? Yeah, me, myself, and I. Yeah. That's that's who we got on the job. I mean, you know how I is always able to dunk those baskets and mm -hmm. basketball, so he's got that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> Himself is a lazy bum, though. Yeah. Fire him. Fire him. Like, I, uh, just, just, you know, us three. Mm -hmm. Just doing it all. Yeah, pretty much. But we just got to the point where even to this day we still receive two shipments a week and the stock room is just bursting mm -hmm. at the seams Very safe. i called it 
I knew it. After a few weeks of us receiving shipments like that, it was getting ridiculous. Right. We, I had to shift over so many things constantly. It, it was just a huge pain in my ass right. to have to do that. So suffice to say, the workload is very intensive. Very, very intensive. The it, conditions not particularly safe. Mm-hmm. It doubled for everybody and for me it was like it was like a 2.5 increase right so you've mentioned the floors mm-hmm. tile slippery tile mm-hmm. cracked everywhere mm-hmm. are the sh- how are the shelves are the shelves good and the shelves yeah and this is something i like just realized recently as of like the last two weeks some of the shelves now that we have them like stacked up we, we used to only have three rows of shoes on the shelves, which we mentioned earlier was about 1,400 pairs of shoes. Mm-hmm. Now we have it stacked up to the fourth row. So now we have probably over 2,000. How high would you say that is in feet? How high? Just up to the third row is almost like six feet already. Okay. And up to the fourth row, like my employees that are like, my employees like Your employees. they're my employees my co-workers yeah okay, okay. <laughs> my co-workers that i think the tallest one there is like i think he's like six one okay he has to use a ladder mm-hmm. just to get up to the fourth mm-hmm People that are not six one either get on their tippy toes and try to like barely pull out a box or better use a ladder for more safety. Most people that work there, especially the girls, are very short. Mm-hmm. And it is a struggle mm-hmm. for them to get all the way up there. Yep. And the thing is, and one of those things, like there's a customer that comes into the shoe store, he wants the shoes, and you know, what you think is like, well, it's unsafe back there. So you, it would be understandable for them to take their time. You know, the nope. customer will hopefully understand. <laughs> Does the customers understand? Probably. Probably Who, who they do you do. think doesn't understand, though? Somebody who's like a Karen or something. But, mm. you know, other than it's pretty rare. Like no, most... I mean, who in your, the works there oh, doesn't obviously, understand? Oh, obviously my manager. My manager... Just let's switch over to the manager for a little bit. I think yes. we've covered how unsafe this thing yeah, the, and the workload. Yeah. So the manager and the company, the guy that should be trying to make this as workable as possible yes. for everyone. Yes. Yeah, so the com- the him and the company both want everybody to be as fast as possible mm-hmm. because apparently that is what they are all about. Speed. They're all shoes, about shoes. You know, shoes equal speed. That's how it works. I guess right? so. They're all about that five star service five star which service. most people don't want that five star service let's let's define what you mean by five star service the five star service as they want it as they want it is always big smile always really loud always very uh, outgoing and mm-hmm. very helpful mm-hmm. for everything mm-hmm. and complimenting and trying to talk to the customer hard sales pitch let's hard, say yes very. this is like a recurring thing in this podcast i find mm-hmm. with my insurance work job the people i work there mm-hmm. with your uh what do you call it door-to-door salesman type job yeah. demanding your employees to put up a hard sales pitch mm-hmm. is very stressful and very demanding on them yeah so i i feel like and you, you guys could probably agree on this as well. A lot of people don't want that. No. I don't want that. If I go to a store, like, I don't really mind if, like, they come up to me and they're like, Oh, hi, how are you doing? Or whatever. Um, sure, I'll be like, oh, I'm fine, I'm good, whatever. But I'm not... I like, don't like them hovering over you. Yeah, I don't, for yeah, you to do I, anything. I don't like them hovering over me constantly or... Or them trying to lead me to a certain spot mm-hmm. of the store because, oh, look at all these sales and look at all this and look at all this. And when I kind of just, especially when I just want to go in and out of the store. Right. S- sometimes I don't mind just walking around and looking around. But <laughs> right. if I'm in a shoe store, 
I'm just there for shoes. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to one and only section. Right, that you know you buy from. Yeah, I'm gonna look at the shoes there for a couple of minutes. And maybe pick one out. And yeah, maybe pick one out. I don't out. need to hear about your deals. Yeah. I don't need to hear about you know, trying to sell, I don't know, the shoelaces or the shoe polish you gotta sell this week. Mm -hmm. Just I'm just here for one for my simple transaction here. Yeah, like I I don't want some doesn't have to be a conversation, my friend. Yeah, I don't want anybody like harassing me there the whole time. Mm -hmm. What I feel actual five star service is is when you can adapt giving the customers what they need. Yeah, when you give them what they need and when you just adapt mm -hmm. to who the customer is. Right. Because if it is a very happy, smiley, they love to talk to people kind of customer, sure give them that if you're capable of doing it if you're that kind of person but if they're the kind of person who's kind of just they just want to you know be there they don't mm. really want to interact look around yeah they just want to look Window around shop. really they they who knows they maybe they're an anxious person right they, they don't like talking to people you're right their five star service is if you said you know, mm -hmm. hi, how are you doing at most? And they tell you like, oh, good. I'm just looking. Yeah. And what do you say to that? And you just say, you just say, okay, my name is this. If you need any help, let me know or any of my coworkers. And then you step off and let them look and let them buy something on their own. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Just, just like how there's a lot of people right. who. So that's that's a five star service. It kind of demanded by the customer. I mean, the company. This on is a corporate a, yeah, level yeah this is corporate mandate exactly mm -hmm. so just having that is an actual good five-star service but that like you said that's not what the company wants right no the corporate mandate demands something else Reman demands a very um mm -hmm. work like you're gonna get a tip from the people exactly exactly yeah. and of course the manager all right, now, all what, what I've it. been trying to lead us into it, let's discuss your manager. Yes, my manager, as I've said, is horrible. Mm -hmm. He likes to yell at us. He likes to... Motivational speaker, I can see. Very motivational speaker. He, he likes to taunt us. He's taunted me so many times, mm -hmm. especially when I first started there, trying to tell me like, oh, like you, you want to quit now? You want to quit? Like, oh, you're probably not even going to be here for that long. And just, just straight up taunting. Like, you could do it to me. You could do it to a lot of new people. Mm -hmm. That shit's annoying. Because this is a job. This isn't something... I'm not here because I love the shoe industry and I want to work in a shoe store. I'm here because it's a job, but then do it. Exactly. Like, they know. They know I'm there just to be paid. Exactly. Because, like... I'm fine with working in a shoe store. I've worked in a shoe store before, which, you know, I didn't get into it because it wasn't a bad job. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> being here, it's like I'm here for the paycheck. They gave me I literally told them that in the interview. Mm -hmm. They asked me, why do I want to work at this store? And I just said, I I just need a job. I need money. You gave an honest answer I that we all them. wish we could give. Mm -hmm. I've never given that answer anywhere because mm -hmm. that's not what they want to hear from you. It's not what they want to hear. But you but gave an honest answer. Yeah, my interview. And the fact that they still hired you after that yeah. means something. My interview was with one of the assistant managers. And when I told him that, he just laughed and he... Because he knew. Yeah. Because he, he knew like, oh, dude, he's going to fit in great here. Mm -hmm. So he was cool with it manager accepted it they liked me they gave me the job they hired you knowing that they hired me knowing that and yet he's still trying to motivate you as if you're here for something more than that exactly i i do my job i do what i need to do sometimes at some points which i probably shouldn't have did a little more than I should even. That's have a bad done. president to set. You shouldn't have done that. Just I because, told you not to do it, but you just didn't listen because, to me. Just because I was stuck doing a specific thing, because I I'm the kind of person who, if I have a really long day at work, mm -hmm. if I have a lot of moments where I'm not doing anything, mm -hmm. the day just feels like it drags on right. so much longer. Right. So I. 
you'd rather be productive and now make things feel like a go fast exactly so even if i'm doing a bunch of things at the very least the day feels like it's going by very fast right yeah so there was some times where i kind of did a little more than i should have and obviously like i realized that and i slowed it down because i'm like i'm not even being paid for the actual position that i'm in mm -hmm. i should be getting paid like another probably two dollars more right than what i'm being paid now but here i am regardless yeah, just because i'm stuck mm -hmm. for the time being Tell me. <clears throat> so what are some other ways your manager motivates everyone uh besides yelling at them sure let's say besides yelling taunting them yes just plain and simple i i don't, honestly don't know what else to say like just just being like there a, was the uh what happens if he sees one of you people just walking he, somewhere he wants us he it's like he wants us to like fly everywhere <laughs> like there's so many times where i'll be in the back and i'm just doing what i'm doing and just because i take a moment to i don't know review mm -hmm. like make sure i haven't missed anything or kind of just taking a little breather for like a couple seconds and he'll see me and just just yell at me and just mm -hmm. be like why are you walking <laughs> Yes, because I am just gonna be running or flying in this everywhere here, everywhere in this unsafe environment. Because I definitely want to crash into one of the very large, unstable, heavy unstable shelves, stable shelves that we have in the back, and just knock it all over mm. and injure myself and probably somebody else. Probably. He's uh. Yeah, I he's horrible. The company's horrible. The the actual corporate people, corporate shows up like once a week to our store now. Unusual because By we're the number people. one. Right. Sadly. Mm. I'm, I'm just tired of it. Just tired of it. <laughs> tired of it. I'm injured. They cut my tired hours. Tired of the work conditions being bad. Tired of the work conditions being horrible and Overall, my manager does nothing. <laughs> absolutely nothing. Every time I've been there, he it's like he does absolutely nothing. And if he sees anybody doing their job any way slowly, he'll just stand off on the side and bitch about how he can do it 10 times faster. Does he? No. Well then. He'll just stand there and keep bitching about mm. it which is just and i think a, a good measure of this is that a good measure of how bad this job is or how bad a job would be is that they clearly can't get more people to actually sign up to yeah. work there no. and the people that can get to work there don't stay there like at all yeah there's people who quit constantly clearly there should be more than one person in the back Mm -hmm. But they can just, they simply seem to only be able to get one person. Yeah. And without one person gets injured, well, we're just going to have to wait until that person gets better, I guess. Exactly. Because every time now, nowadays that I only go in two days out of the week for four hours, it's like an earthquake just hit the back <laughs> room and they just wait for me to take care of it. <laughs> Line is going to be on you, buddy. I hope that arm feels better. Mm -hmm. Somewhat. Well... <laughs> Let's see for how long. Yeah. See for how long. And let's see for how long until OSHA. When once you get this, we're gonna need you to you know start moving there. We'll, we'll give OSHA the actual details. Somebody please call OSHA. Someone I please, need help. Someone please call OSHA. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, I think that's gonna be the highlight of it. Mostly because we've caught up to present day. Mm -hmm. My present day job, not that much. I got like some gripes I can complain about, but it's fine. Don't even don't hate the management there. Don't hate the people there. My job's fine. I mean, we'll, we'll get there. We'll call OSHA. Don't worry, we'll, buddy. We'll call OSHA. <laughs> we'll call OSHA. Don't worry. I'll call OSHA if I have they, to. I also have to mention the fact that they renovated the store. Mm, nice Just renovated. complete overhaul. Spent lots of money mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. It looks so nice. Right, right, right. But they did absolutely nothing to fix the back. Mm. 
Mm, you think that you're gonna fix some of these floors maybe? No floors. Got maybe nothing. nicer nicer shelves that are heavier in the bottom so they don't tip over? Nothing. Mm. Some of our ladders are busted too. <laughs> some of your ladders? <laughs> Is the are. dolly okay? The dolly's okay. Okay. We don't have a step stool anymore because that's, what do you mean? Well, that's broken. <laughs> it was always broken and oh. they just decided to throw it away one day. Fine, I guess. I mean, it was Fine, broken, I, I guess, guess. But it's like they don't want to buy a new one, mm. apparently. I mean, you mean you can just reach, right? No. <laughs> I, had to, I had to go grab a ladder, which... It's a la How many good ladders are there? There's quite a few good ones, okay, but good. most of them are, are heavy. Oh, well. And I'm not allowed to carry them right now. <laughs> so, you know. Well, then. <laughs> the one I can use is the smaller, lighter ladder that's somewhat busted. <laughs> Alright, just don't put that one on the cracks, I guess. I mean... Anyway, like I was trying to say, we've come with modern day. We, we, we kind of just needed to get some of the stuff off our chest clearly. Clearly. Clearly, we got some therapy at the end there. <laughs> I think we both feel better about it, maybe. Not really. <laughs> we don't worry, we'll call Ocean. <laughs> oh, man. That's not a joke, by the way, people listening to this. It's not. It's not a joke, It's really actually. not. It really isn't. <laughs> I, I absolutely hate being there. And I will call Osha. <laughs> I'm not lying, I will. <laughs> I just need the, the exact address of it. Well, I'll get it after this. But anyway. Anyway, thanks for listening. Please leave comments of your worst work experience, worst boss, worst anything. Yeah. Feel just free. Anything. Just, just type it out. Just, just, just go crazy in the comments. Feel free. Yeah. Type a whole paragraph. I, I will read the whole thing. He probably will. I will. Mm -hmm. I will read every single word. I don't blame you for it. Mm -hmm. And I will comment back. One of us will, I'm sure. One of us will. Probably. Most likely me. Most likely. <laughs> anyway, so... I mean, that's that's the end. Thank you so much for listening. This Leave a comment, like I said. Yeah, this pilot episode, very, very long. Yes. Um, We're going to try to keep it down to typically... About an hour yeah, from now on? Yeah, about an hour, yeah. Um, we had some technical issues halfway through. You guys won't notice, but you know. Yeah. yeah let's not let it happen. Maybe max an hour and a half. You let us know. We'll try not to make it that much. <laughs> like I said, we, I, I need to sleep more. Yeah. We do need to sleep more. You need and to sleep more. You need to sleep more. We need to go to sleep. Good night. And yes, good night. <laughs>